Okay, before we get started with these moves, I'm going to show you something that you can do before you do most of these moves that is going to help you make it more difficult for your attacker, the person in crisis, to uh, do you harm. So just a quick lesson here. Remember, this is your flexors, your bowler side. You know, the flexors are mostly uh, the ones that are going to you know, bend you this way, right? Flex you this way. And on this side, we have our extensors, the dorsal side. Now, if I squeeze my wrist, if someone were to grab me, and I bend it this way, bend it that way, you know, extend it, flex it, right? It's not a whole lot of difference. Now, what we're going to try to do is make it more difficult for them. So watch what I do. I'm going to spread my hand out. So I'm pushing my palm out and extending my fingers. And you'll notice that it's, uh, my wrist actually gets bigger. So I want you to try that. So again, grab your wrist and spread. And your wrist should get bigger. Okay, try that. Alright, so our first uh, technique that we're going to go over is someone grabbing your wrist. So, uh, this is my son Landon, and uh, special thanks to my daughter Cameron, he's helping with the filming as well. He's going to grab my wrist, and it doesn't matter which wrist grab, but the first thing we do is what we call low level of disengagement. Low level, we're going to handle with a prompt and gesture. Well, hey Landon, what's going on, man? You doing okay? Maybe, maybe they just need some water. Pain medicine, maybe he's used the bathroom, or maybe he's just, you know, wants something to do. If it's a child, I might say, hey, Lynn, I'm so good, I'm glad to see you. Come here, help me uh, arrange these cool toys we've got over here. So I might do that. That's called a prompt and gesture. That is a low level of disengagement. All right, the second move, he grabs me, and now it's a little bit more intense. So we're going to go up a level. So this is medium level of disengagement. I'm going to hold and stabilize his hand. And I'm going to do a push and pull. So as I push him with this hand, I'm pulling him with the opposite hand. So the hands are going in opposite direction. And I pull away. Notice I use my whole body to help him. And I immediately have my hands up in defense in case he starts to swing it. So again, that's the um, medium level of disengagement. All right, he grabs me again. And this time, it, it's, it's a little bit tight. He's got a fist up there. This is a little bit more serious. This is called max level or high level disengagement. I'm going to use leverage in this situation. So I'm going to take my hand and I'm going to spread it on all these. It's more serious. So I'm going to do that technique we showed here. Spread it. And I'm going to aim my thumb straight up and make a V to rock it my way. And immediately I have my hands up. Okay, let's do that again. So he grabs me. I'm going to have my hands up. Immediately spread my fingers to make it hard for me to hold my wrist. Make a letter B in slow motion, it goes like this, and immediately I have my hands up. Okay, that's it for this section. All right, so uh, this next move is based on the same stuff, a little bit more advanced. Let's pretend I am shaking with the patient, we're on this side and he starts acting, but the door is on the other side because I went to this side to kind of help maybe shave his other side. So he grabs the wrist on the same side this time here, and he's holding it pretty tight, so I'm gonna spread my hands, I'm going to aim my elbow for his form and going to come just like so and rotate and then I'm going to pivot out and I'm out the door. Alright, so you can see it from a different angle. This time he's going to be here. He grabs it right here. Again, I'm going to spread my hand. I might have my other hand up in case he starts to swing. I'm going to aim my forearm for his form in slow motion. I'm going to turn here. Very hard to hold on to. I'm pivoting around and I'm out the door. Practice that move. All right, so this time, um, you know, you can't tell your attacker which hand to grab. So they're not going to grab from the same side. He's going to grab from the opposite side here and grab it here. So he's going crossways. Well, we'll test your OT knowledge here a little bit for those who are in occupational therapy. Almost, if you were to pull on any of these techniques, the chain gets stronger. Think about a dog chain. But if you step into it, it gets weaker. So I'm going to put them in what I like to call a Tyrannosaurus Rex T-Rex position. I'm going to step into them. Now, for those who remember a little bit about spinal cord injuries and tendinesis, when I step into them, this wrist goes into flexion, the fingers extend, so it creates an open space here, allowing me to come out very easily and immediately get my hand up. Now, I want to show you from a different angle here, so you can see a little bit closer up. When I step into them, it actually will flex his wrist, his fingers extend, and it kind of freaks him out a little bit, right? And then if it's a strong person, I can even lace my fingers here and pull out. Immediately get my hands up in case he starts to do anything. 
So again, that's tendinesis usage of it, and we've got them in a T-Rex position. All right, practice up move. Okay, so this time, uh, they could be at a wheelchair level or sitting, um, but we're gonna kinda come over here. Well, he's gonna grab the same side again here. I'm gonna immediately spread my fingers to collect the muscle, so to speak, making my extensors as well as my flexors work. And he's gonna stand up. <laughs> we'll pretend he's standing up, but you can do this in a wheelchair. Or I'm gonna aim straight down on my leg. Okay, so I'm gonna back over here, make sure everybody can see my, my legs here. And we talked about how if I pull the chain, how it gets stronger. So I'm gonna make the chain weaker. I'm gonna step right into them, hold it really tight then. Hold it real tight, so it's gonna be hard for them to hold on. Now watch, as I spin around, don't move. As I spin around in slow motion, I'm gonna turn right out of it, okay? So let's do that again. Make sure y'all can see that. I'm gonna spread my fingers, step all the way down. I'm gonna step right into it. Immediately, it's hard for him to hold his thumb there. But I'm gonna spin around, it's hard for him to hold on, I'm already out. Now he can hold on as tight as much as you can do this uh, with your spouse's little wrench on there, I guarantee you'll get out. <laughs> All right, practice that move. All right, so just, just remember on all those moves we do with the wrist grabs, um, if you cannot remember, oh, which side to do this, which side to do that, you always go back to the basics of prompt and gesture, you can do it all those, hold and stabilize, push and pull, or the V. With any of those three, it doesn't matter which hand they grab, they all work. So that's the easiest thing to do when you're at the uh, beginner stage. All right, good luck. Okay, so now we're gonna talk about grabs. So he grabs in here. The first thing you wanna do is grab the glove and grab. We still wanna prompt and gesture because they may just, they may be grabbing because they just need something to drink, hot, cold, maybe they're in pain, maybe they're thirsty. Who knows, maybe they just need to use the bathroom. So I'll say, hey man, did you need to go to the bathroom? Or I might say drink. Drink and kind of lead him in that way. He might let go and we'll see. If he doesn't, he might get to a medium level of disengagement. So I'm gonna hold and stabilize and I'm gonna push and pull like so. So again, you always grab above the grab, hold and stabilize, push and pull. Okay? The third level is a little bit more tricky. It's a maximum level of disengagement. I am going to push his knuckles down against my chest. And I'm going to drop my weight down and I'm going to peel him off. Okay? So that might be the case. Now this case is also the same technique can be done if they grab your clothing. Like this is been seen where they would grab your scrub clothes. So if you grab, let's pretend you grab the pocket on the scrub pants here. I'm going to come here so you can see. You know, just, again, I'm going to grab above the grab, prompt the gesture, it doesn't work. Hold and stabilize. Push well, I'm going to use my legs too. I'm going to push and pull. And if that doesn't work, then I'm going to do to the third level, which I'm going to press his knuckles against me, drop, drop my weight here, and I'm going to peel them off. Okay, and immediately I'm going to get my hands in. All right, practice those moves. Okay, so Cameron's volunteered to uh, help me with the hair grab. Yes. So let's um, say. I'd rather just have hair. <laughs> now right. this was just me. So I'm going to grab her right here in the front, and then immediately she's going to take her hands press it against heart, and she's going to step back and put it on that was very quick. So let's do it in slow motion so everybody can figure that out. She's good. All right, so we're out here. She's going to, in slow motion, she's going to press my knuckles against her head. You don't want to try to yank away because I'm just going to pull her scalp out. So she's, as soon as she presses down, now she's going to bend my wrist and step down and pull me on. That's all it is to it. And then just run away. And just run away. But come here, young lady. <laughs> now, what happens sometimes is that, um, the person will sneak and grab them really close and they might even grab their ponytail real tight. So in this case, she's gonna take her hands and grab really tight, with both hands, both hands. Camera, grab both hands and press really hard against me. And she's gonna, she's gonna have to yell for help because there ain't a whole lot you can do here without hurting your uh, client. Uh, and then you guys will come to help by doing what? You could use um, petroleum jelly, um, shampoo, conditioner, really more so, and then take that person's fingers and you're gonna peel it one at a time until they cannot hold on, okay, right over here. All right, now if the person grabs on the lower part of the hair, she's gonna have to do just like we did, very good, the camera, she's gonna grab above the grab, just like we did the clothing, because it's the same kind of thing, right? So she's gonna grab this, she can't really pull away, she's gonna hold me close, and then again, you gotta look over the well. All right, Cameron, thank you very much.
Okay, in this situation, the person in crisis decides they are going to bite me. So she grabs, she bites. Ah. So what you want to do, you always want to feed the bites. So you're going to take your hand on the back of the head, and you're going to actually push your arm into them. Okay? And that's going to go back in their TMJ, your temporal mandibular joint. And you can also make them let go a little bit if you take your other hand, of course, you've got the hand now. Uh, but you could take this hand that you were feeding, you could tickle under her nose, okay? There are a lot of pressure, and that tickling will help um, basically facilitate a parasympathetic response for digestion, remember, suck, swallow, breathe, all that stuff, so help start that. So, for practicing on your own, you can just take your hand here, okay, so try that.